going on, guys? Black Scout Survival. And tonight we're going to be talking about the differences of night vision and thermal imaging, what people kind of expect, what's the reality of it, what's best suited for you. And, you know, we talked about night vision quite a, a bit over the uh, years, and I think it's a very important piece of gear. I'm actually going to have a good friend of mine, Dave Womack, on here tonight. He's going to join me. He's also a night vision aficionado. He's also, uh, we, we, we worked on a film together uh, many years ago and uh, we, we uh, remain in contact over the years. And uh, Dave, tell me a little about yourself. Dude, it's good to see you, man. Thanks for yeah, having me man. on. Um, and yeah, first and foremost, I want to say, hey, look, I, I love shooting and I love night vision. I am not former military. I don't pretend to be. Uh, and I'm, I'm learning along the way and happy to share from the civilian side of experiences. So um, that being said, I am a husband, a father, a wingsuit pilot, a overall skydiver. I was a professional touring illusionist for most of my life, right up until COVID. And uh, I'm also a full-time bird trainer, uh, animal trainer. And so kind of combined a lot of what I do. I've, I've got many different passions and hobbies and try to do the best I can with, with all of those different things. So yeah, I, uh, you're seeing a video here. I hooked up with First Form. <clears throat> was a, a, I'm a sponsored athlete of theirs. And I called up uh, First Form one day and I said, hey, what do you think about if I could wingsuit yeah. with, a, with a falcon out of a balloon? And um, and so here's here's that video you're seeing on the screen. And it was pretty epic. Um, this bird went 192 miles per hour to, to get the lure that you can see dragging in my hand there. But yeah, this was out in Arizona. We shot there over nine days, and yeah, man, I just uh, so that's like yeah, that's the life. first of its kind, right? Yeah, yeah, first uh, first wingsuiter to fly with a falcon out of a balloon. So yeah, it's, it was a pretty wild experience. And and this is your falcon, or this is uh, someone else's? So this is a, a good buddy of mine out of um, South Utah and it's his Falcon. He does this full time. That's Scarlet you see running across the road. The amazing thing about this, seeing their relationship, you know, a lot of people think it's all about the food and I call BS to that man. I mean, food's a big thing, but the the neat thing about this is when we, the balloon went up, we move about 30 miles before the balloon touches down. And that Falcon was always following the balloon. After she chased me, she'd follow the balloon down just to like run across the street wow. to go to him. And he, she could, she can go kill a duck if she wants, you know, it's not about the food. It's about that relationship. And it was, this really was a testimony to that. That's incredible, man. Well, so glad to have you on. And, and I think it's good, you know, get, giving your perspective too, is, you know, you're, you're a prepared citizen, you live the lifestyle. And I, and I, I like I said, I've known Dave, he takes preparedness very serious. He's not just some guy that kind of prepares, like he's very serious. He's, you know, as serious as the most serious guys I know. So um, anyway, we're going to talk about night vision. Uh, Dave just actually recently went to Florida and did a hog hunt. And he, he runs an interesting setup. And a lot of people talk about this setup that he utilizes. And so I thought he would give us, you know, kind of his, um, since he's used it, his experience with it. And uh, that way, you know, it can help you. And I'm going to talk about some of my equipment as well and show the differences, say, you know, see what's, I guess, best for you um, as a prepared citizen. But in my opinion, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you don't need night vision. Uh, those are people that know nothing about night vision. They don't use it, never use it or they can't afford it. But but the thing is, is you can afford anything you want. You just got to save your money. And, and if you really want it, you can make it happen, work extra jobs, whatever it is. If you really want some, you can you can make it happen. So that's a, a poor excuse. But the thing is, is with night vision, uh, you know, you it's like a superpower. So, you know, fighting doesn't only happen in the daytime and most bad guys operate at night. So I think it's a crucial piece of gear. It's one of the most crucial piece of gears. Uh, gear that you can have in, in the modern day. I mean, it's something you can own. I mean, a lot of countries you can't even, you know, have, you can't even leave the United States with this stuff. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's a, a great tool. Anyhow, Dave, let's talk about your setup here. And I've got some photos and, and video here. Um, I don't know if you have it in front of you, but I can throw your photos up as well. And you can kind of describe. Yeah. Know, it's, uh, if you want to start with the photos, I can always grab it. I've got it in yeah. a fair backpack, but uh yeah, so, so this is a ballistic helmet, and um, I do want to start by saying, like, you know, you look at this helmet, and the dudes that know know how much I spent on it, and uh, <laughs> um, but you, you had just had a good point. You know, it's not about how, how much money do you have, or can you not afford it, or can you afford it? 
um, this actually came together piece by piece by piece by piece. Like right, most everybody's yeah. equipment, yeah. Yeah, which led me to what you see on the left side of the screen is a PVS-14, a white phosphor, uh, auto-gated, all that stuff. And I really wanted the best. I had a green one originally with the project I did with Jack um, years ago. Um, but yeah, so there you can see looking straight down, the PVS-14 is on the right. And then I found out about this magical power called thermal. And I just was like, man, if I <laughs> don't have thermal and you were up against someone who had thermal, like what a what a disadvantage if you didn't have it. And and honestly, it kind of came about too with all of the COVID stuff. I'm like, I live up in the in the sticks in Idaho and it's like, man, if I can't go to the grocery store, I sure want to have an upper hand uh, you know, on finding food <laughs> if it yeah. need be. Um, you know, fortunately never came to that, but there was a lot of decisions that went into this. And so I bought the Fleur Breach, which is off to the left. Um, and I had done quite a bit of research on this. And so that was one of the things I want to chat with you about when the time's right tonight is kind of the myths versus the reality, what this setup is. But at the end of the day, I took this down to Florida and spent a lot of time, uh, two nights in a row looking through both of these and doing some hog hunting and, and had some very interesting takeaways. Yeah. Um, so the way he, ha he has a, if I got my PBS 14 here, he has a PBS 14, was, which is a monocular. Okay. And so he's running that on one eye and then he's using a FLIR breach on the other eye. And so the FLIR um, actually uh, is digitized, whereas the monocular is analog. So you're seeing everything real time. So you're going to have a little bit of slight delay on the FLIR. Some people say that you can run it simultaneously but the FLIR shows up uh colors right so you're going to see heat outlines and things like that whereas this is um a white phosphor so you're going to see like a black and white um so it's going to be hard for your brain to process both of those at the same time and you can talk more to that Dave yeah so as I was doing the research on this um you know I I couldn't afford to do the dual tubes for night vision all at once. And so that was a big decision with how I did this, but I can articulate either one or the other, which really comes into play. But a lot of the research I did, you know, a lot of the guys on YouTube at the time that I purchased this were saying that you, that you, the images would fuse over each other and I'm right eye dominant. And so, um, I don't know if there's like a scale of how dominant a certain eye is, but I can definitely tell my mind with both eyes open, which one I want to focus my attention on, um, which is incredibly mentally taxing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the idea of the images overlaying, I would say, yes, they do. So the, the feedback that I got was not totally a lie, but it was very misleading. So on these other YouTube videos, they were talking about, as if you could see, and I know, Jack, you've got a similar setup where it is actually overlaid, and that was the impression they gave, but it's almost like they're they're looking one slightly up, one slightly down, and you could tweak that all you want, but like you mentioned, when you move, the analog version is real time, and then there's a slight delay for the digital one being the thermal, and they just don't line up, and so I, I sent some videos over that you could see kind of what that's the impression I thought you would get. Oh, actually, okay, that's just the FLIR there. It's just the um, thermal, yeah. Yeah, and so that that's really amazing. Like when we were doing the hog hunt, we saw rabbits clear as day. Yeah, um, we were within fifty yards, uh, but it looked as clear as what you see there. Um, but the idea of having the on on that next one, I think, yeah. So this was the impression I had. So you can kind of see off the left and the right of the screen, I'm running an infrared illuminator there and it does show up under what you see is kind of the green night vision. Um, and so that's the image I thought that I was getting. And this took a lot of work in, in Final Cut Pro to get those two to line up. That is not what I actually <laughs> see. But if you go towards the end of that clip, I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, oh, you'll yeah. Actually, Let me get yeah. End of this one. So you see me hiding behind that that barricade and then the other clip that you just were playing with only night vision uh when i go behind that barricade if i'm not moving you don't really see me and that's yeah, yeah. and that's looking through another you know a pvs 14 or a, a pretty high end just night vision device and so that's where the thermal was such an extra power that i just was like you know if i'm layering in these different concepts or ideas 
it really would be nice to to see. But yeah, if you don't mind scrubbing forward slightly to where, oh, where I'm going right there now. Yeah. So once yeah, I you hold, vanish, you, you vanish. vanish here. And, and, and that's the thing with night vision. You have to be cognizant about what you're wearing because yeah. some colors will obviously stick out. Uh, like yeah. like a like black turns like a white color. Like you'll you'll stick out like a sore thumb. So, but yeah. your clothing is very, you have on like a multicam here or something. Um. So I I it's funny. I've kind of taken the T Rex arms approach where I'm like, man, I'm gonna go out and train, and I'm just not gonna wear a bunch of camo. So I'm okay. I'm not wearing any sort of camo there. Um, for training, you know, I do run into people back at this particular range from time to time, and I don't. I don't want to look to, I mean, I'm definitely LARPing, but I don't want to look. Yeah. Um, So yeah, that's the, that's the thing um, that we're, we're, we're wanting to see um, is that you can obviously the idea is that you're not going to see this. This is the overlay of night vision and thermal, which is not going to happen. Right. Correct. Obviously. Yeah. And you, you, so you could run them independently. So let's say you're trying to identify someone where they're at. So then you, you use your FLIR to identify and then you use your night, your night vision to engage because when you're, you know, you cannot shoot with a FLIR because it's not going to pick up your IR illuminator. People always ask me, what's this thing on my rifle here? This thing back here, that box, that's a PEC 15, that's a a illuminator. And I'm going to show your footage real quick. You running some drills so people can see someone using uh, the uh, laser illuminator um, real quick. So we'll we'll go ahead and talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah, while you're paused there, I want everybody to take a look too. I've got two brown cardboard cutouts on the left and right. I just lit one up. And then obviously the white one in the front. And, And I think the idea behind owning night vision is that you're when you put it on, you think you're invisible too, right? It's like playing yeah. hide and seek at the top of the cup of their eyes. Um, and that's just not the case, obviously. But but you can see how just those earthy tones, like the brown targets, those are hard to see. Um, where when you see a heat signature, it's a totally different game. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, I'll pop that up again. Yeah. So that that's the thing. You have to be cognizant because like you just said, a lot of people put on night vision and then they think – that they're invisible, right? But that's not the case. You're not invisible. Um, that's one. That's one benefit. I always say about running a monocular, especially when you're running by yourself, is because you can actually see the the reality. You're not standing under a light or something. You know, you're not. You know how to hide yourself. But obviously, you can't really escape a thermal. Okay. I mean, there's ways, but uh, you, you're not going to be moving um, per se. Okay. Right. So let me throw up you running some drills real quick here. And this, that way they can see uh, the illum- illuminator and laser together. I think I threw one wide there. I definitely threw one wide. <laughs> <laughs> These drills, I'm starting facing 180 degrees away. I didn't. I'm filming this myself, so I kind of got myself out of it. But man, it's hard at night, obviously. It was so hard to set up, man. (laughs) Yeah, please. Want some reloads, and that's that's difficult too in in the in the dark. And it's definitely unless you don't. You have to train it if you're running dual tubes because everything up close. And I want to talk about that in a little bit. Everything up close is going to be blurred if you're focus in down range yeah you know and something else about this too this particular rifle i hadn't used for a long time because the uh pistol brace rule was in effect and so i switched back to a full length and uh it doesn't yeah it doesn't throw the magazine as clearly as my other pistol did um and so there was a lot of there's you know the one takeaway is use your gear Yes. Um, as I know you talk about all the time, but it's even this reload here where I pick up the empty mag and I'm just doing kind of an administrative reload to, to reset that drill that if you don't know all the functions of that weapon, I mean, it's hard to do malfunction clearing and all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And there you can see a little negligent discharge on my flashlight. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, man. Yeah, and, and that's another thing I talked about uh, in, a, in a previous uh, uh, video. I think one, the one I was shooting with night vision is that you you have to realize that other people may have night vision. So just because your IR illuminator, you know, or laser 
can't be seen by the naked eye. Other people may have night vision. Right, so you have to operate just like you would uh, with a flashlight. You have to treat it just yeah. like you would a flashlight. Uh, yeah, and I will add the that kind of quote unquote negligent discharge. I was as the sun set, I did rotate my light into infrared. So that was an infrared flash. So only people with night vision would have seen it, but it was still a negligent discharge of the of the infrared light. So um, you know, that flashlight can rotate to the off position as if needed, but ultimately that's just a great testimony of like I train a lot, I shoot a lot, and I still botch that up. So um you know, it just means I need more time on it. So we have your fo photo of your rifle set up here. Now um, he has an EOTech, which is night vision compatible. Tell him how easy that is to shoot. <laughs> oh, dude, it's, you can't. It's, you can't. That, no, that's, people it's always myth. say that. It's a myth. You can't do it because it's going to be blurry. So I will say I that little 3X magnifier comes off and I have a mount that a PBS-14 could go directly behind that EOTech and run through the night vision compatible mode. But it's a fixed uh, yeah. PBS-14 on the rifle. It's, you know, there's they have all these risers and stuff that you can use now. And I, I can't speak to that because I haven't used them. But I, I'm shooting off the left, my monoculars on my left eye. And there was some thought process that went into that. Um, but, uh, trying to shoot, I mean, I guess if I shouldered it left-handed, I might be able to, but it's, it's not something that's, that it's easy to do. And yeah. I would definitely get a riser on that EOTech to make it possible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it, it that, the, the, the benefit of using night vision at that point will be pretty much negligent because you've lost the ability to move. I always say that, like, I mean, you could fix mount it to a optic but then you you're walking around in the dark yeah uh, unless kinda, you have two you know like if yeah you, yeah yeah if you mounted one per you know semi-permanently on there and didn't care about the three x because you're shooting at night and that, like the three x is great for 100 yards and beyond in my opinion and i think everybody's got a different stance on that but um yeah. you know if you had an extra pvs 14 you threw it on there then maybe but but walking around at night i did learn this too so um, I got to do some shooting with a special forces guy in near my area. And he's like, dude, take off the caps and these little, these little plates and what this did. So there's two schools of thought. If that's mounted on your eye, you can see from the side profile, that's going to keep any green light from spilling, but it also kills your peripheral. And although you don't need the peripheral to walk around, you, you do need it. And in, in my limited experience to be able to see what other lights around you, you know, there are times yeah. where I'm like walking in the dark and I try to lift up and see, you know, if there's other light, cause I'm wondering if my buddies can follow me on that, on the hog hunt. Um, they didn't have night vision or thermal and I'm like trekking through the woods, uh, but pulling those little caps off, at least on the, on the PVS 14, on the monocular made a huge difference for situational awareness. And uh, you know, that the thermal is kind of a whole different game. I personally liked having that on there because that thing's super bright. Um, but where the, the the green from even the white phosphor, I think, kind of gl glows a little bit green. Um, it's not as bright as the thermal on your eye. Yeah, I mean, you will have some spillage on your eyes. I, I, I don't use the the, the rubber uh, pieces, um, but you know that that's where they always say the the men with green eyes because because of that. You know, you're going to have that spillage. But um, you know, if someone has night vision, obviously they'll see it. Um, really well but you know this is a, a pbs 14 here and what you can do is is they have this uh j arm here and you can rotate back and forth to oh, either cool. eye if you're running it by itself if you're not running the the FLIR unit on there um but I, that's why i like the pbs 14 because you have a eye open to see to make sure you're not in standing in freaking light or, or it's very yeah. bright moonlight you know i will say this too a lot of people don't know this but like let's say it's really if you're in like a, a city, uh, somewhere where lots of lights are at, and, and it, but it's still dark, you can run your P, PBS-14 with this little hole right here on the cap uh, cap on. And, and it'll look like as wide as it does with it off. Okay. So just, just so you know that. And that's that just uh, a good way to preserve your tubes as well. Yeah. And I think this is a good spot too, to talk about the difference between auto gated or, or manual. Cause my sure. original one, the green one, I've got to control the gain where uh, that I knew if I was manually controlling the, the brightness, then um, if the environment was all of a sudden brighter, I knew because my, I was getting washed out and I could, I could tune it down. 
um, where the auto gated one, it's it automatically does a lot of that. You can manually control some, but it was harder to tell with the higher tech if I was in a in a bright area or a super dark area. I had no I had no way of knowing other than the peripheral vision. So that's why I ended up switching to the caps off. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we get into uh, some other of my night vision here, let's show your other gear setup and talk about these things real quick. So this is your uh, plate carrier here. You got you got a can on your rifle here as well. Yeah, so I got those a year ago, and uh, they just came in. <laughs> <laughs> so much for the e-filing, right? But uh, yeah, so the the can, I I love it. It's a surefire. Um, I don't, you know, I the previous one I've used is a Gem Tech Quicksand, and it's about a foot long, and it's just cumbersome. Um, so yeah. I did the surefire, the regular size, and then the shorty. And, um, I mean, it's just a game changer. I, it's hard. I'm so spoiled now to shoot with suppressors that, uh, it's, it's kind of no fun to not have them anymore if I'm honest, but let's, uh, let's also cover that suppressors are, are very nice to have if you're running night vision, cause it reduces the, uh, the, um, uh, sorry, how you say again, it, it reduces that flash a lot. Yeah. The flash. Yeah. Sorry. I had a brain yeah. fart. Yeah. The, the flash. So yeah, it's it's uh, great to have, and it's it, obviously for the bad guys seeing you as well. Yeah, and just you know, the other thing too is where I shoot. It's on the the very edge of um, it's national land, so it's it's fair use for shooting. I know that because the neighbors uh, called the cops on me one day, and the cops came out and said, "Hey, just came out here to tell you, keep shooting, have fun, be safe." Um, and so, uh, but she has this lady has cattle and stuff, and so. Um, I actually went to her house to go see like, Hey, can I, can you call them in or like, Hey, I'm going to be shooting. Um, and with the can on, it didn't end up disturbing them at all. So nice. it was really nice. Just like kind of as a courtesy. Um, but yeah. yeah. So then I guess the rest of the gear here, I'm running the, the T-Rex arms was AC one. Is that what he calls it? I think that's it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> the reason that I originally bought this, was one to kind of look a little less tactical, but still have the functionality. And I do love how uh, minimalist it is. If you want yeah. it to be, it's just, everything just comes off so easy. Uh, but also I have a, a thermal site on a 308. And so I can just change out the placard for the 308 mags, super fast and easy. And so that same vest, instead of doing all the Molly, I just, yeah. it's two clips. And, and I know that that's kind of a standard now, but it's also not, it's not cry precision, you know, prices. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I, I love it. It's minimalist. It's easy. And uh, I've got you, some. You got some your PPT stuff. there for your comms. Yeah. So that's actually kind of cool. Um, comms is probably a whole nother conversation, but I was able to uh, get an FCC license for some, some private intercom systems and I'll just kind of leave it a little bit vague. <laughs> I don't know how much I should say on that, but uh, pretty cool encrypted stuff that uh, is available for civilians. And um, that's, that's a pretty sick system. So I've got a special push to talk for that setup. And then you can see on uh, my helmet there on the side, I've got the ops core um, headsets, which I learned some lessons on, on that hog hunt from those two. I hadn't used the amplification um, but you got to change those batteries about every two to three hours you know, if you're using the noise enhancement. So yeah, uh, it's, you know, all the learning curves. It was, it was great to just get out and use the gear. Um, yes, this is cool. That, oh, you're just showing oh, yeah. the X there. There we go. Yeah. So that's a, the same, the light is the same profile as the TLR one, I believe. Um, but it has an infrared laser. And so you can switch on the bottom. I can use it as a flashlight, a regular flashlight or, I flip the switch over to an infrared laser and uh, obviously that's, that's really good for this type of training. Yeah, night, night vision. Yeah, obviously. Who yeah, makes the light? I'm sorry, go ahead. Who, who makes that light? Um, I knew you were going to ask that and I can't go touch it cause it's. Yeah. Wall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, this, just so everybody knows you can't touch firearms when you're doing a yeah, live video that they will literally shut your channel right down. There. It's that one. <laughs> Yeah, but that, that's a good point, though. Like with shooting with a pistol, using a, a laser is uh, obviously a uh, big, big help. And then, uh, yeah. and, your... and to that point, like I remember, I okay, so I hired a, a lieutenant. He was served in Ramadi and like in the thick of it. 
And uh, I hired him to train me on some night vision stuff because there was nothing available 10, 12 years ago. Um, and I learned a ton. We did two man movement techniques and just fun stuff with Tannerite and, and uh, moving, shooting, communicating all the things. And, uh, and he was like, oh, you can just shoot through your, you just look, you got tritium sights, you can see it. And I'm like, okay, so I'm trying to shoot. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm right eye dominant. I'm trying to put over my left eye with the monocular and line up sights that are blurry. And I'm like, this is, this is a lie. Like, yeah, you can't shoot yeah. that with it. So. Yeah, um, not not accurately. Um, no. So this is your like, I guess your uh, whole setup, your go rig here. Yeah. So um, you know, I guess we'll kind of look. You've, you've seen the rifle. the The bag is cool, and I know that you. I reached out to you. I think when I first got the rifle bag, they, um, Mission Darkness makes some rifle yeah. bags that protect all of that. So yes. when I bought a thermal for my three hundred eight, I was like, oh man. This is, you know, this was a lot of money and I want to buy something that protects it from an EMP or even just yeah. a solar flare. You don't have to be totally off your rocker to think that a solar flare could happen. So, yeah, I actually uh, put up a link for everybody the other day. And if you if you want to go back and look, it's in the community tab to get some bags. They have a rifle complete encasing bag. We talked about this on the phone the other day. They have, uh, you know, you, you want to put your night vision comms gear, all that stuff in that in that bag and stored in that bag. You, yeah. You're not gonna have time if an EMP happens to go put it in the bag. You're not gonna get a notification. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I I have two radios in that bag, and I've got my plate carrier and my helmet. So all the electronics on all of that um, are protected. And then and then in that outer pouch there is uh, wet wipes because <laughs> that would suck too. So um, yeah. And then so yeah, back to the, the to the battle belt, so to speak. Um, I've got the Safari Land kind of drop down holster. Uh, you've seen the pistol and then right by, to the side of that is a multi-tool. Uh, I do always carry a multi-tool, but if it's not easy to access in your pocket when you're wearing that belt. So um, I do have that. And th that's something I use all the time. Uh, and for redundancy, it's the same multi-tool that I carry every day. So in the, in the pitch dark, I know exactly where all the things are because I, I use it all the time. Um, yeah. Uh, I, uh big a big proponent a uh, multi-tool man and and i actually had one of the i don't know if the company still exists maybe they do multitasker multi-tools for the ar-15 um very very cool piece of gear if they still make it i, I don't even know i hadn't seen them in years if they're even still wow. a company but they make a great or they did make a great multi-tool for that um just real quick talk about my my gear um real quick um you know, there's there's trade-offs for things, obviously, but the, these are RNBGs, which stands for rugged night vision. Um, they're a little bit more expensive because they're made of a steel body. You know, you can see here. So they're still body, so they're they're rugged. They're not going to break, but they're fixed, so they're, you know, they don't move. Uh, but obviously, you're not going to break them. So, <laughs> but <laughs> they're heavy, you know. Um, but they're they're a great piece of gear. Okay, and then also have these 1431s, BNVDs. These are articulating. So let's say I'm, I'm somewhere and I want to look. I can move this up and, 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 and look with my eye. It also helps with wearing them stored. I'll show on a helmet here. And not to mention eye relief too, man. Looking through, yeah. the, looking through those for just one eye for three, four, six hours is like, yes. oh, it gives you a wicked yeah. headache. Yeah, the RNVGs will do that, definitely. But so you see the RNVGs here. And so if we're going to wear them up, now you're like a, uni a unicorn. Okay, so you have this big mass right here that, especially getting in and out of vehicles, man, you know, you're hitting hitting the vehicle and, and things like that. So hard to maneuver a little bit, but they're, they're a great piece of gear. Like I, I do recommend them. So with the, with the 1431s here, we can flatten them out. It obviously helps with the weight distribution. You can pull them all the way back as well as maneuverability. So it doesn't stick out like a, a rhino horn or a unicorn. Yeah. Sure to in. yeah. <laughs> and, and so you can also, I, I usually just wear them like this so you can, you know, see underneath them, but yeah. then you can obviously rotate in and out or articulate as you, as you want to or need to. So those are great. They're, they're great, um, and, and they're pretty affordable, and I'm, I'm going to recommend U.S. Night Vision at the end. We'll, we'll, we'll recommend that, but uh, let's talk about the, the best of both worlds because you talked about the, you know, the, the FLIR with the PBS-14 monocular. They make something called a 
CODI, which is stands for clip on thermal imaging. And I actually have one. They're fairly expensive. I think they're about five grand. Uh, but basically this is the unit here. Special operations use these, you know, tier, tier, higher tier guys. They may have some, you know, different now, but CIA, stuff like that. But I think, I think they're made by EOTech. I'm pretty sure. So basically that's how the unit works there. So basically it puts a thermal overlay over your night vision. So you have night vision and thermal simultaneously real time. And I'll show you the difference between the two. So you see infrared only on the left side. And then, so you can have a guy hiding over there, but with the clip clip on thermal, you see the outline there. Okay. So obviously no one can hide from you because you get the best of both worlds. So here That's you can, so you can cool. change it to a few different settings. I like this setting here with the outline. Um, but also has like a white hot, but the outline is, is very, very cool. That's super cool. But yeah, I mean, if to me, this is probably the best thing you can do because you really do truly own, on the night with this setup. No one can hide from you. You're, you're, you can see everything, you know, just like how you got behind. I'll play that clip again. When you got behind this over here, I mean, literally you could be waiting there waiting to shoot someone. Yeah. You, if I was you know, perfectly still for sure. Yeah, exactly. So with this setup, you know, you, you basically can eliminate all that threat. And, and it's, it's almost weightless. I mean, I mean, it looks like kind of big, but it's almost weightless. You can kind of maneuver it around the, where, where yeah. you want it at. I looked, yeah. I, I, the way I've seen it on uh, online, or at least I think from the link you sent me, that piece can rotate into the middle between the two, right? So it's not hanging yeah, low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put it, yeah. yeah you, can, you can mount it so it can like sit here. Yeah, up here, you know, a lot of people I see with PBS, PBS 14s have, have a mount up here, I guess, because maybe when they rotate it up or something like that. But gotcha. uh, definitely, man, um, highly, highly recommended piece of gear. Like, I mean, you, like I said, you own the night. No one yeah. can hide from you. But uh, obviously, budget is always a, a concern. Um, obviously, the route that you took, you took it many years ago. And, and whenever you did it, it was probably like the cutting edge thing. You know what I mean? Um, the cutting edge system, a lot of my friends actually run the same setup as you do to this day. And I think it does have advantages because you're running monocular so you can see out of your other eye, but you can also switch to thermal when you need it. Identify bad guys here, switch back to your PBS 14, engage, you know? Yeah. And it was great. You know, when, when we were shooting hogs, it was like, we're sitting there waiting to, to ambush them and, uh, and eradicate the farmer's pests. Um, and all of a sudden you see this little bunny come across, you know, and it's like, you can tell it's a bunny and, uh, it's yeah. actually pretty funny too. I'll, I'll share two stories about, uh, liquids. So we're, we're walking down the, the trail and I'm like, Hey, there's a bunny up there. And I move the, the thing out of the way to realize it's pitch black. So I put it back on, we walk a little closer. I'm like six feet for the bunny and the thing's not moving. And so finally it gets startled and it runs away and it was taking a piss and we were interrupting. <laughs> so it, uh, it left the whole, like, you know, a coffee cup diameter of pee and then a little trails that ran off. Um, but the thing about thermals that, that I didn't expect, and I don't know why I didn't think about it, but you know, I've done, I've done hunting in the past and it's not, it's never, it's, it's, it's a very, um, you don't feel super connected to the process. You know, you're, there's a disconnect when you go through a scope, you pull the trigger and you, you know, the animal usually, dies instantly because I'm a perfect shot. <laughs> no, uh, it's, you know, usually like drops to behind something and whatever. But when you're looking through a thermal, it's very spurty. <laughs> you see all the, all the hot liquids go everywhere. Yeah. And I, I wasn't ready for that, but uh, it, you know, it's uh, part of the, uh, yeah, that yeah. actually covered with the possum that decided to get in the way of everything. So uh, I, I do want to mention too, the FLIR that he has shows the colored, um, you know, basically the, the, the heat signature. If you're talking about like thermal, like a thermal rifle scope, a lot of those are just like a black and white image. It'll show like a hot white uh, image for yeah. the, 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 the heat, the heat signature. And that's how the, the Cody will, will can, you can uh, change it to so that it, it shows like a complete heat um, spot. But I like, like I said, I like the outline because man, I mean that, that right there, I mean, <laughs> you can identify what something is, you know what I mean? Very, very now well. That, 
and that's a good spot too, because there's probably some people watching that think like, okay, well, that's still over only one eye. So how does your brain process that? You know, does it fuse together? And yeah, it fuses together. It looks like it's going in both eyes. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure if that happens with with the, the device or what have you. Um, but yeah, yeah. Because it, it only clips over the one tube. And obviously, you know, how that happens, I don't know. I mean, maybe the we have to get an engineer on here to say that, or maybe a neuroscientist, either one, but um, it does, it, it fuses together. You can't tell the difference. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I would compare it to like, if you look through your left eye and you're, and you're covering, you're covering one eye, look through the other, you know, you still see the image, but when both eyes are open, that image is fused together. And I think that's all our minds are doing is just taking information from that side and, and combining it. But because you're looking through two virtually identical tubes you know, that, that image overlays as, as a center point, I think, if that, if that yeah. makes any sense, but. Yeah. And, and, you know, for, for those that are interested in that, I mean, you could get the PBS 14, get the Cody. And I think Cody's are hard to come by now. I'm, I'm not hundred percent positive I, I, after I bought, it's not like I keep up with them, but I know <laughs> they, they are difficult to, to get at some time, but you could just run this Cody on your PBS 14 right and have night vision and thermal and that would be the price that those two together would be the price of duels so you know do you want duels or do you want the ability to see night vision and thermal at the same time or do you want a new car what's that or do you want to buy a new car <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah we want to buy a new car yeah you know yeah what's the battery um what's the battery life like on the clip on there or I say clip on. Sorry, it might be. Better. I mean, I, I don't. I've never used it to its entirety, so I really don't know. I don't remember what they say it is, but um, you know, I use it intermittently. I, I hadn't used it yeah. like uh, for hours on end, you know. But uh, you send the a new car, you know, you, all you have to do is just tell your wife a, a few different times that you know you had to get transmission changed in the truck. You you know had to get brakes put on and just put that money. Uh, yeah. On, you know that, yeah. that's a, that's an easy way to do it. You know. Or, or the honest way. We, you know, I was actually just out to dinner tonight with a couple of Marine friends of mine, and uh, and my wife and daughter were out there with us. And and the one one guy's like, "What kind of thermal do you have?" And I told him, and he just looks at my wife. He's like, <laughs> she, "He's like, you let him buy that stuff." <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got a, I got a good, but um, yeah, yeah. Luckily, my wife is on board too. She actually, you know, pushed me to get some of this stuff so you know because she's uh you know obviously concerned about the way things are going in the world you know someone mentioned ir strobe here you know those are um accessory items and stuff like i do recommend having all that type of gears when i talked about that in a, a few videos before ir strobes you know um chem lights they, these things the little fireflies that dispose ones you can kind of toss to mark areas and things these are all good things to have um, you know, and, and I mean, we could go, I mean, very deep into this subject. I mean, they have like, you ever seen the, uh, and, and I thought about doing a video about, uh, about this, but the, the traps you see, I think they're like a military kid that breaks a chem light when you trip a wire, yeah. you can yeah. IR chem stick in there. So then the bad guy doesn't know that he tripped a flare and you got him set up for an ambush, you know? Yeah. So I've got these little things that you can put the, uh, you get the trip wire and then you put a little shotgun shell on it, right? And it's the same type of yeah. thing, but it, it pops the pops the chem light. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They make some with the uh I've I've seen all different types, like electronic ones, you know, just various things like that. I've seen all different types. But yeah. obviously keep a lot of batteries. Um the RNVGs take CR123 batteries. Um the PBS 14 and my uh uh, 1431s, they take, uh, double A's, which I like. I like, I like having double A's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind if I chime in on some battery experiences here? Oh sure, yeah, go ahead. So on this, uh, this is kind of the first trip where I'd used all of it to, to extinction really. So, uh, the thermal on my rifle takes two CR123s and it runs two to three hours before you got to replace it, uh, which, which I didn't expect. However, um, I kept, I have these little plastic battery cases that hold four CR123s, uh, six AAAs, and then four AA's. So I have all of these in my, in a specific pocket. Um, and then I get the low battery on my, on my thermal. 
So I actually have, a, instead of a counterweight, I have a little like backup battery pack for charging a cell phone and I run that wire. So I can plug that into the, to the FLIR breach, which I think is a pretty cool uh, yeah. feature. And then um, it, you can always unscrew that and, and swap out the battery. But doing that in the pitch black is something that I don't think most people think about. And then my, my headset was dying after two to three hours and those are triple A's. So I'm unscrewing those and I'm putting triple A's in and, and knowing where those buttons are and knowing where the caps are. And then, you know, having a plan to like, don't just toss your batteries on the ground and putting them back in the plastic thing upside down. So you know, which ones are spent yep. or have just some like, like magazines, you know, I'm yep. so your magazines. Those, those are great because I'm doing it in the dark. A lot of people don't think about these things. The other thing is, is that you need way more batteries than you need. You need way more ammo than you think you need. You know, a lot of people don't say the battery thing, but you know, optics run off battery or, IR illuminator laser runs off battery. Your flashlight runs off battery. Your comms runs off batteries. Night vision runs off batteries. The thermals. I mean, all these things run off batteries. And if you're using them in ex excess and we're talking, you know, six to eight hours, I mean, you're, you're going to be running these things out. And especially if it's EOTech, it'll eat batteries up right and left. <laughs> I'm, I, an EOTech, I'm an EOTech fan. I know a lot of people don't like them, but I love are you, them. Yeah. I went down to front sight and so I brought my main rifle and I brought my backup rifle and, and I was doing the three day rifle course, I think. And, uh, I get down there and both of my EO techs had catastrophic failures. The, the gas or whatever inside had leaked out. Yeah. The only way I could get them to work. Now, mind you, this is just outside of Vegas in the blaring sunlight in the middle of the day. And I'm expected to see a dim red dot. The only way I could do the whole course was a three X magnifier on. So I'm doing stuff at five wow. yards, three X magnifier. Wow. Uh, but they have, you know, knock on wood, that was 10 years or so ago, and they, they haven't failed me since. So whatever they did seemed to fix it. Um, but in addition to batteries, gun oil. Yeah. Was the, one thing. the first night I didn't have gun oil, and my, and my rifle was not happy with me. Um, yeah. and that was something like a little one that goes in just in the, the general admin pouch or whatever. That and batteries, I'm like, holy cow, what a game changer. Had I not been ready, at least with the batteries the first night, but then the oil... Um, you know, and I was tempted to go pull oil out of the dipstick on my vehicle to, to run it all over my bolt carrier group because it was just it was a little too dry. So yeah, it, it'll happen. Especially depend on the temperature, humidity, all those sort of things, you know. And then if you uh, you may not think about this. This is something. I mean, I've made the mistake before, but you got to lock tight everything, and usually I do. But I've been out through something on real quick, and out there just and then you you don't you got to lock tight all your pet fifteen. You're, uh, you know, and, and a lot of people don't like to do that because I like to take stuff off. I'll lock tight at all because if when you're yeah. really banging out some some rounds, it's going to loosen up. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, yeah. I have I've had flashlights fall off. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know hanging by the the, the yeah. table. You know, and those sort of things. Someone asked a, a question about, um, and I'm not I'm not sure what he's talking about. Do that you you lose settings or calibration when you're changed batteries. I'm not sure what you're talking about there, but with night vision, no, no, no. So, um, I, you know, the one thing with the, the fixed scope, the thermal, um, uh, you just have to return it back on and the thermals. So they do something called nuke. Um, I don't know if you're, if your device does it, I imagine it does, but it recalibrates and, um, and the Trigicon that's on my 308, uh, it's, you have to close the cover, and then scroll to the right menu, hit nuke, and then it it recalibrates for that new temperature. So, uh, and then you open the cap back up. So that would be one of the only kind of like calibration things that you'd have to, with my particular setup, where it would change something. Um, I will say where that's been an issue is if I'm going from an air conditioned car to outside in the heat, as the temperature becomes equal, the scope is now matching the ambient air temperature. That's where I had to nuke it more. Um, but when I was outside, the gun was in the same temperature prior to going outside for six hours. I think I only had to nuke it once. So, uh, aside from swap of the batteries, I, I do, I do want to, I saw a troll question here real quick. And this guy obviously was not ever in the military because he's saying, who's towing all that crap when crap hits the fan it's bug out crap, unless you're defending night vision batteries or, or the batteries, night vision, et cetera, are worthless. Um, dude, in the military, you carry that stuff all the time. You better be in shape. That's the importance of being physically fit. I mean, there'd be times that, you know, we'd carry, you know, 150 pounds. You know what I mean? I mean, you're carrying everything you're, you're going to have for, um, you're going out, out to uh, uh, exercise for like a month. 
and you got everything here and you're carrying it all for miles, 40 miles, you know, and, and these sort of things. So um, that's, that's the way it works. That's the importance of being in shape, but uh, you know, it, do you want to live or do you want to die? You know, I, I mean, that's, that's what it boils down to. This is gear you need. This is sustainability gear, right? So sustainability gear, and then also your, your weapon system and everything that needs to operate that he's talking about, you know, gun oil. People don't think about that. Uh, weapons, cleaning brush, stuff like that. All these little things. And, and, and guys in the military, you know, you hated carrying this kind of crap around. Right. But, yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that you need it, you know, yeah. you go ahead go ahead and not have your, your, your gun oil and your, your gun locks up. You know, I've been on a range with a guy before and his, his gun completely locked up. He had to break it down and completely clean it. Right. Because of the type of ammo we we're shooting and uh, yeah. somebody, somebody uh, said that we're two of their favorite, two of his favorite guys here together. So <laughs> he, he's, that's awesome. he's yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it looks like that guy was a magician, too. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, something, too, I think, just to highlight from the dude that made the comment there is is that I think everybody's version of it hitting the fan it looks different. And and. And just for people to miss the intro, you know, I'm not I'm not ex-military, will never claim to be, but I am somebody who who believes it's important to be prepared. And and I actually really enjoy the process of of learning this stuff and get to play with these toys and go out and shoot. And the scenario that I'm talking about uh, is it's just going out and hog hunting. And it's like, yeah, my batteries died. And so thankfully I had more. So you know, it's, it's, a, great it's, way, it's a great way to train it and really use your gear. Yeah. You know, a lot of people yeah. don't use their gear, but I think it, it kind of comes down to, you know, a conversation you and I had on the phone last week is that, um, you know, there's lots of guys out there in military guys doing things and, and, and doing great stuff, great, producing great content. But in the reality, what they're showing you, you know, is nothing more than content because what you're never going to be clearing a room in slow motion um, for guys. I mean, that's, it's not real. Um, right. it, it's cool to watch. I like it. I think they're putting on cool music, they're wearing bands and they're going through and it looks great. They, you know, but it's not reality. And, and coming from someone who is a civilian who, you know, on his own dime went out to purchase items that he feels that he needs um, to be a more prepared citizen. And he actually is putting it to use where he's actually um, killing uh, animals and, and for food, something that could be a real possibility, uh, you know, in days to come, how the, how the world's looking. I think there's there's no more telling. Uh, you know, you can have all the military guys with all the military experience in the world, but that's military in a whole different uh, ball game than being a prepared citizen. And, and that's why I liked to have Dave on here because he's, he's shedding light on someone in the military. You, you get all your gear, right? I mean, you get issued, it, you know, but when you're spending your own money, you have to be very concise on uh, the things you, uh, you know, can obviously get your hands on number one and, and things you really need, you know. Yeah. And, you know, when I first bought my PBS 14, I remember we were on tour uh, for two years. I was home five nights over two years. Uh, we did 12 shows a week uh, in a different city every week. And, uh, and and we were performing for arenas. And next door to one of the arenas was a gun show. And so I walked in and I bought a $3,500 night vision device. And I was afraid to drop it. I was afraid to, to put it in the sun. I was. <laughs> I was. And, and so I didn't touch it for a long time. And then I finally was like, what do I even have this stuff for? And so that's why I reached out. I hired a lieutenant to train me uh, because, again, there was no information on YouTube. There was no there was nothing. Um, and I was like, I, I want to know how to do this. My first, uh, you know, PEC 15 was an airsoft one. It actually held zero for 30 bucks. Uh, so that was pretty surprising. Um, but, uh, you know, that was what I could could get at the time. Um, but it made it so that I actually started using the gear and and finding things like going out and hog hunting and putting that stuff to use was, it's just fun. You know, we helped help the farmer clear the land. My, one of the buddies I was shooting with ate all the hogs, you know, and it's like, we just, we had a great time. Um, so I enjoy the process as opposed to being like, you know, I'm super worried about something happening. It's quite the opposite. I'm, I'm not really worried about anything happening because, because I enjoy the process of, of being ready for that type of thing. Yeah, I actually talked about that last night, you know, having the apocalyptic outlook on the world. And I mean, it's, it's easy to do, but live your life, you know, prepare yeah. for everything, you know, prepare. I mean, you put your seatbelt on, you have fire extinguisher in your house, you know, prepare for everything, but uh, control what you can control. You can, you can control the variables and, and how you prepare the gear you have and things like that. I do want to mention real quick, because I just thought if you're using night vision, go ahead. You have to have an IR laser. 
to shoot your rifle. Like night vision without that is, is useless. So make sure that you put that into your budget. Like that has to be a component of it. It's, it'd be like have, buying a car without tires. Okay. <laughs> I can't make that clear, you know, um, because a lot of people may think that oh, I can just get night vision. Well, well, then they figure out, well, how do I shoot? Um, but anyway, uh, guys, if you want to get night vision, the guys, the, I, all my night vision came from U.S. Night Vision. That's who I uh, buy mine from. And, and a guy named John Barbary. Um, I buy mine just like you guys do. And I don't, I don't get uh, freebies. And I told him early on, like, I would never do that. I would never ask anybody to give me anything for that amount of money. Um, you know, he, he's American working man. And, uh, you know, I want to support, uh, good Americans and his name's John Barber, U S night vision. I'll put his cell phone, call his cell phone, right? The first time, let me tell you a funny story, Dave. The first time I did a video, like when I bought my night vision, I called him, you know, and, and not, and I'm a regular guy. And I called him and I said, Hey man, uh, I plan on giving your number out to some people. Um, do you want me to give your business line or whatever? Um, cause I got some guys I think will be interested in it. He said, just give him my cell phone. And so I did the video and put out the next day. And he, he called me, man. He said, dude, who are you? He said, I've gotten, you know, 400 phone calls in, in the past two hours, man. Who are you? You know, and to this day, he still gets phone calls from people. So, but if you do call him, tell him that you uh, got his number from me because he'll give you a discount. Okay. That's and he'll, awesome. hook you up. he'll hook you up. But he's That's got awesome. the, the, the lasers, the PEC 15s. He's got the, the new stuff. Um, he's got single uh, monocular. Night vision PBS PBS 14. He's got duels. Pretty much anything. And, and, and look, if if it is like out of your budget, just call him and talk to him and see what he can work into your budget. Okay. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with getting a phone call and letting him talk you through it. Cause they, they have options up and down the scales. You know, I've I've got the the Gucci stuff, but you know, I, I got the PBS 14, you know, and, and stuff. So um you can get whatever fits your uh budget, you know, and, and I understand everybody has different uh income levels and, and capabilities but save your money i think it's one of those things that's important uh, i wouldn't be telling you i don't make money from you buying night vision um but I, I think it's important dave's not making money from you buying night vision um you know i don't get a cut but i, I just think it's super important i mean and obviously dave does he's he, he went bought a whole setup he's got a whole rig for this stuff and he's not former military he's not a uh weapons trainer he's not none of those things he's just a regular guy you know i mean he's a little bit more than a regular guy. I mean, he's <laughs> wing suitor, you know, famous magician, all these sort of things. You spent time jumping out of planes. You know what it's like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. I did. Mine probably was not as fun as yours. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With a rifle and stuff and hitting, hitting the ground. and. I but, still, you know, you know what you and I should do? I want to do a survival camping trip where we uh, – we Paris take out 182 and we'll go fly over someplace. We'll drop a bag in the mountains, uh, which is legal. I actually looked that up in the FAA. So we'll drop a bag in the mountains. Then the next day we'll skydive in. We'll get our bag that's got all the tents or tarps or whatever. And we'll camp and we'll hunt and we'll hike out. I think we should it, do that. It, it's funny you say that, man. You know, we uh, did a, a video series. It was the first one, like the initial one. And, and this was like right on the cusp of us getting like shadow banned. And, <laughs> and our plan was to start doing scenario videos like that. And that was one of the ones like I, I was going to parachute into an area and then survive like basically with like a, uh, like a, a Rambo type night, like a, like a Randall made like the hollow handle night. And that was going to be it. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, it, but the, we got shadow banned. So it's like, man, why people aren't even getting our video notification. So why will we, you know, do all this to do it? But, but you maybe we should do that. That, would, that would be cool, man. Maybe we should do something like that. You know? Yeah. I'm well, talking about the shadow band too. So the, the footage you play at the beginning of me jumping out of a hot air balloon, and having a falcon fly with me, we we shot it over nine days, and uh, the ninth day was the day that we shot down the Chinese spy balloon. So all of my hashtags and stuff, like we got so shadow banned that we didn't end up releasing the actual video footage of the whole event until maybe a month ago. So Dang. and that was back in like February second or something like that is when that was all happening. And so uh, yeah, if you if you guys want to see the the video of me flying with a falcon, you can go to flyingwithfalcons.com and that'll send you right over to the YouTube video of it. But uh, it was pretty epic, and um, yeah, we need a we need a Jack Richland and Three Illusionists get together for some survival yeah. camping out of the air. That'll be great. Yeah, yeah, that would be, that would be cool, man. So, uh, Denise is a tribe member. Thanks for being a tribe member, Denise. She says she likes the first form shirt. I don't know if you heard him beginning. He's a sponsored athlete with them. He's a 
these uh, jumps out of planes for them. So um, anyway, you got anything else to add, man? I, I really did enjoy ha having you on here. You know I mean? Oh, yeah, it's, been, it's been a blast. I, I would just say um, I, you know, shameless plug for you. I, I have your belt, your concealment belt. Uh, I've, I've been on, I think four or five continents with it and never been stopped. <laughs> so uh, I was like, oh, let's just point. try this. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I definitely am a fan of yours and, uh, and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, man, I, and actually the lock picking you taught me, I put in my show where I, I show people how to pick a lock and then I go inside of a tank of water and I pick five locks before my breath runs out. And there's, there's a pretty cool uh, twist to it, but that, I, that was inspired by learning from you. So I think really the, the lesson here is, is learning from people. And we talked about this before going on air, learn from people who know more than you do. And, um, and that's why, I wanted to reach out to you for a lot of reasons, but then, you know, my little experiences with night vision and thermal, if you guys can learn something from that, that you didn't know already, then, uh, then I would consider this a win. And I still got a ton to learn, but it's just been awesome to get to kind of share my experiences of, of what it's like trying to stumble around the woods with this stuff and, uh, and, and try to get to a better level of proficiency. Yeah. You know, and, and just what you touched on though, real quick, it, it's like I mentioned right before the show, I was talking about the camera I'm using, and uh, I said, dude, I don't, I don't know anything about cameras. I said, you know, I, I got this type of lens because you said that, you know, when we filmed back in the day, this is the type. And I said, you know, in the video uh, before the video, I said that, you know, you, you seek out people that know how to do things. And most people would be more than willing to help you, you know, instead of me trying to spend hours or days or months or weeks to learn something, I can go to someone who knows how to do this and ask them. Most of the time people will help you. Um, yeah. So, so in that, if that's shooting with night vision, if that's using a camera or lot picking or whatever it is, you know what I mean? And, and sharing the knowledge, you know, the knowledge transfers is what it's all about. And that's why that's one thing I, I do love about bringing people on my show that have a completely different background. I love inter interacting with people that are completely different realm because they can bring so much dynamic to and we're all in the same same game we're trying to stay alive you know what i mean um no, no matter what that means we're trying to be prepared we're trying to you know uh, do better do better at life so uh thanks again dave for having me on and uh we're give me your uh, all your social media uh outlets if you, uh, that you have yeah you know if you want to follow anything i do um at three illusionist you can see how the spelling is on the bottom of the screen there so it's illusionish illusionist with a thr at the beginning um and that's just kind of my my personal brand you know i have other business and stuff but um, I don't usually cross this over into that. So uh, I'd say that or uh, my first form link is uh, firstform.com slash shipped free. Um, because back when I got the link, things were shipped free. But now it's a $75 order minimum before you get that. Uh, it is an affiliate link of mine. But um, yeah, it's, I know, Jack, you're a huge proponent of first forms products. So oh, yeah. great uh, stuff. Yeah. Hopefully I, I beat you to the affiliate link there. <laughs> yeah i don't i don't have one with them but i do love the, like i told you i love their sausage the the stick oh. their their beef stick breakfast sausage that was called oh it's the best yeah and it's not yeah. full of all the chemicals and fillers like if you go to the grocery store or gas station and get a beef jerky stick it's these are these are as healthy as you can possibly make them in fact if they're not sealed properly they will mold meaning that they're fresh and it's real ingredients instead of chemicals so yeah 20 uh, grams of protein as well yeah, less ingredients than most. And then their their energy drinks, which I like a lot. We were talking before this show is that um, he asked me, did I did I notice something after I drank it? And and what I told him is that I can taste like the uh, the sweetener aspartame or whatever it is in uh, sucralose, whatever it is in other uh, drinks now, like if I, if I do have it. So and, cause, and that's why I chose first form energy drinks because they're very low ingredient. Um, it's true. man, Andy Frisella puts the best of everything in there. And, um, you know, it's, I mean, I could go on for, for days about how much that company does and how amazing they are and like truly life-changing that that company is. And, and, uh, you know, they've, they've supported me with this crazy dream. I was like, Hey, if I go, uh, want to go jump out of a balloon and fly a wingsuit with a Falcon, do you want to, do you want to do this? It's like, no questions asked. It was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I mean, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. When you, when you hit me up months ago and tell me about it, I'm like, has this ever been, uh, the first thing I asked you said, has this ever been done before? <laughs> so yeah. There's, yeah. There's been similar things with like base jumpers and stuff, um, which actually there's a wild peregrine Falcon that chased a wingsuit or so I'm like, okay, I know they can do it. But yeah. to do it with that and uh, under these circumstances, definitely different. So, yeah. Well, thanks, Dave. Go give him a follow. And uh, guys, I do appreciate you hanging on me tonight. Make sure you leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. And remember, stay frosty. 
stay strapped and always stay dangerous. Take care.